production is part of the GameFire Network. Netcast for gamers, by gamers. Welcome to GameFire. This is Tales of Heroes, episode number 65, for February 24th, 2008. The good old days. Tales of Heroes is brought to you by viewers like you. Thanks for your donations. Remember, a buck a show is all we ask. Welcome one, welcome all, welcome to another exciting episode of Tales of Heroes right here on the Game Fire Network. We are proud to be back here on the very awesome map that you may know. If you're paying close attention, have you figured it out yet? Which is it? It is very own Angville right here. And this is, of course, Bridger, a.k.a. Adam Ruzo, for the Game Fire Network. www.gamefire.com is where you can find us, or tales.gamefire.com. Send us feedback at talesof at gamefire.com. And let me introduce my co-host, as always. Welcome to the show, Rogers. Thanks, Bridger. It's good to be here, and I'm looking forward to this game. It's supposed to be a really good 1v1, and it's been a while since I have personally seen one myself, So, and it's on Angaville, which is a traditional Company of Heroes map before all the madness of Opposing Fronts came out. So it should be a lot of fun, and it is Wehrmacht versus Americans, so none of the... Uh, None of the odd things that we've been noticing in the last few patches, British and Panzer Elite, so it'll be fun. Yep, it certainly will. So we're going to get started here in uh, just a second. Here comes the countdown. All right, in five, four, three, two, one, unpause. All right, so we've got an American versus Wehrmacht matchup here. Classic Angaville, classic factions. We're going to see if this looks like a 1.71 replay or if Engineer any of the major ready. changes that have been implemented since then have uh, affected the way the game plays. So, by the way, this is a beta boy. patch 3-point... No, 2.316. That's where I was going with that. Uh, we've got a double engineer start and a barracks start complete. on the That's American right. side. It looks like the first thing popping out is a Jeep. Classic yeah. harassment strategy, trying to hurt the uh, the pioneers as they're decapping points. The Jeep is certainly more powerful than them, and you can soak the damage on a Jeep. It doesn't really cost you anything to repair it. So it's a very good harassment tool early in the game. It can you know dish out some damage. Even if it takes some damage, you just repair it. You don't have to reinforce it. You don't have to heal it like you would if you're harassing with the engineers, for example. So it's a very good opener. We'll see how that happens. What do we have the uh, the Germans opening with? Is it classic Volks? Well, it is classic Volks, sure. but one thing that was rather Isn't unconventional that the uh, German player did was deployed. he quick-built his Wehrmacht, which really wasn't necessary. But uh, personally, what I like to do is I like to get the second Pio out and capping already, and then just have the first one build the, the Wehrmacht quarters, and then you get you have 280 manpower by the time one, Volk, uh, one Pio finishes sure. building the Wehrmacht. So a double Pio fast build on the Wehrmacht, it's not really advisable unless you're going with the quick MG. And yeah. uh, I really like the I, re I really like to see the jeep start because it's especially good. It can even move pyos off the capping point if they're careful enough and they micro it close enough to the point. So it's a great harassment tool. I'm really liking what I'm seeing right now, now on the right hand side. Yeah, especially the the Axis player has not moved his units at all. Um, taking a, take you take a lot of damage when you're capping a point. Extra like 50% extra damage or something like that. Uh, I don't remember exactly what the modifier is, but there's definitely a modifier that where you take more damage or, or better accuracy against you while you're capping. Um, it's pretty, it's pretty punishing. So uh, to leave your guy there, he just definitely wanted to get that point captured, which he did. So he was facing a jeep. So in that situation, getting the point captured is probably more important because the enemy's not going to just be able to decap it with the jeep. So uh, he sacrificed the one pile squad. Uh oh, left the point a little bit early there. He sacrificed the one pile squad just to. Uh, you know, not the one pile squad, the one pioneer guy in order to get the point captures is probably good. So now we have some uh, sandbags being built by those pioneers. That's a good move. That's a good move. It's going to allow his uh, Volks to take a lot less damage from that Jeep. The Jeep is in deep trouble. If it makes it out of here, that'll be very surprising. Wow, we have yeah. uh, rifles coming up that are probably going to draw its fire, but I'm not sure. No, he's going to finish off that Jeep. Good, good. Uh, definitely important for the Mer Vermont player to get that Jeep out. Just kill that thing. Because he, well, it actually could get away here. They're getting distracted. This is a 
possibility here. Ooh. No, it's it's with that no. once it got that damaged engine, that unlucky yeah. hit, that was a big time failure. Uh oh, machine gun in trouble. Or not machine gun in trouble. The rifleman in trouble from a machine gun. Very um, interesting. Bad, bad opening uh, such skirmish here for the Americans. Losing a jeep. Now pretty much losing their rifle squad with no retaliatory kills at all. Uh, these Volks are have about half health, but you didn't lose a single guy. Um, the heavy machine gun is in place. And now it yeah, looks like they're going to be capping on the right-hand side, too. Yeah, I was expecting, actually, the Axis player to send the machine gun onto the right-hand side. Maybe even try to decap the strap point on the right and hop in that building. But I think a lot of players have learned that grenades are so easy to counter that building, they just run up the road and throw one in. So that building is really a more of a liability than... Um, than a, a, a good position to put it in anymore because a lot of players have learned better. An MG just got the uh, just got jumped on, but now a good retreat there by the Vermont player. Very good retreat. Was he moving the MG at the time? Yeah, he was moving it. He was moving ah. it, probably going to the strap point. Yeah. Now that's a very good spot. Uh, you know, if you haven't played Angaville, if you haven't played Company of Heroes, the uh, the strategic point here is now going to prevent the Axis player from getting any of these resources, plus 32 munitions and plus 16 fuel is a huge loss for the Axis player just by losing the strat point. It's the same, it works the same way on this side for the, uh, for the allies, the Americans in this case. Um, we'll have to see how things happen. Looks like they're going for the same decap of the that strat point. The Volks in left are in deep trouble. They had very little health left. Good push by the uh, American player not letting up on the left-hand side and constantly being determined to decap that fuel. Although we have Tier 2 up by the Axis player, not sure if he's going to build a Krieg's barracks, but it might be a good idea right now. Forward supply lines are broken. Yeah, right now the Americans are getting their supply back in control, and so they're going to get all their resources, but uh, they don't have any fuel yet. They're now finally recapping the fuel. They did have that before. Um, and now yeah, here, now that is very interesting. This is the sandbags that the Volks, not the Volks, the Pioneers had built earlier with a layer of barbed wire now on the side that would be advantageous to the Germans. So until they get Pioneers over here to snip that, that sandbag is not going to actually really provide any cover for... I really like that. For those That's players. really clever. Or for those Volks. That's really clever. I really like that. That's pretty cool. That is really well done. I, I'm just really surprised here. The Axis player, despite having gains in early game, the Jeep, killing the Jeep and everything, and forcing the first rifle squad really off the field, he has very little map control. The, the Allied player has done an amazing job at just complete harassment of all his territory. It's been the Fighting American on both fronts. all over the place. Very textbook use of harassment. Great job. It's going to be interesting to see how the the Allied player tries to, the Axis player tries to counter this. He's got MP40 Volks moving up on the left, but they're very low health. I would have liked to see med packs pop there if possible. <laughs> Check it out, Bridger on the they're left. They're building their own sand. <laughs> <laughs> if we can't use those sandbags, neither can you. <laughs> that is a first right there. I like that. <laughs> That's really good. It's right That's at the top of the hill, too. That's the advantageous position for both, yep. both directions. Uh oh. There's a machine gun actually, you know, suppressing and shooting through the hill. The machine gun can't really even see this side of the hill. But uh, that, them's the game mechanics of Company of Heroes. Really BAR, so that's going to delay any vehicle uh, push from the allied player. But he does have a weapon support center up, which is interesting. Probably see a sniper first, maybe, to help knock out that MG. Maybe even a nope. mortar would be a good machine idea. Machine gun first, interestingly Jeez, enough. Interesting. I think the problem with the with the Axis early game, like you mentioned, they got some really good gains, but they tried to, I mean, the American barracks opening is the penultimate, I'm going to fight you on multiple fronts opening, because the, you know, it's just the riflemen can accomplish anything they want, uh, and they cap really fast, so they're the guys that can run all the way around. Machine gun openings, or weapon support center openings, are the, you know, I'm locked into defending a certain area, because these guys don't really have any mobility. They can't fight on the move the same way that the, the riflemen can. They have to set up. So, you have the, the, Ger the Germans trying to beat the Americans at their own game, essentially. They were trying to fight on both fronts, and they were trying to harass and fight at the same time, and uh, they, they lost that. But now it looks like... Uh, now those bars are making a big deal, but there's a grenadier grenade. Oh, dropped a bar and forced and killed the squad. 
Wow. That is very surprising change of events right there. I've never, you seldom ever, but I think it was because they were so clustered together yeah. that the Grenadier grenade had a huge effect, but that was definitely a well played little move there with those Grenadiers. That was, I bet the Allied player wasn't expecting that at all. No, I don't think so. Um, so we've got another Grenadier. So we've got one, two Grenadiers and two Volks on the field right now. That looks like they lost their machine gun somewhere. I don't see it on the field anymore. No, the machine gun is on the left-hand side. Oh, yeah, there the it is. It's, it just, I see Interesting it. Interesting Nope, that's not it. I, I really don't know about that placement, though, because he can see the strap point, so he can see the territory around it. So that that seems like a liability for, to put his machine gun into. But uh, No, it, I, it I think the, the machine gun is just barely out of sight of that strap point. Really? I, it's it's really be. small unless you get defensive, uh, the defensive right, doctrine right, right. perimeter, what the hell you call and it. Since the allies aren't getting that, <laughs> I think he might be okay. Oh, there's the there's the barred grenadier squad. Talk about the last stand here for these rifles. Yeah, like right. Wow. Last... Oh, but here comes the next one. Oh, that's bad news for the grenadiers. They're all caught in the open. Yeah, we have massive early firepower. Vet. Early vet. Look at that. Yeah, and we got level 1 vet, and then an MG is coming out to flank these uh, BARs at the strap point. Very nice work of supporting. Oh, right perfect prediction on where they were going to go, too. Very well done right there. That was textbook use. Great MG movement there. That was imperative to that little victory. Yep, so far both players having very strong openings and very weak openings at the same time, and a classic position for the mine as well. This is where you'll you'll do the most damage with a mine. Any infantry trying to cross over, any vehicle trying to come down the middle, any vehicle trying to cross over. Oh no, that that's a bad yeah, move. Deploying that that machine gun was a very big mistake. And it right got there. dropped too, so the Americans are going to reman that. And uh, I, I tell you, an MG42 in the hands of an American player is devastating for. Early game <laughs> he says, "Oh shit!" <laughs> Look out! Rightfully so. I think a, a one Puma will be one hit killed by a mine, won't it? On an open territory like a road. I'm pretty sure um, it'll kill it right up. Maybe. I think it very well might be. It looks like he didn't want to put that machine gun there necessarily. Yeah. From his uh, text. But we'll have to see what hits that mine later. Mm. Oh, and a uh, triage center for this kind of a mass riflemen and weapon support center opening that seems like a very good call oh boy. wow look at these tons of troops coming you don't normally see a deployment of this size mm -hmm. especially going onto one front normally you'd see him broken up but on the left hand side he pretty much has what he needs secured so i think he's just gonna devote all his units into harassing the enemy right now Yeah. A lot of grenadiers. That's quite an intimidating sight, but with a good use of support. Oh uh, no! Huge That's the reason right you don't there. clump them. That's the reason you don't clump them right there. Very true. Very true. And we have, I believe that was a that was a recon run, wasn't it? I just saw a recon yeah. run pop by, so we have airborne. Yep. So we up. got airborne. Indubitably. That mine is still sitting in the middle. And uh, great use, he actually brought the MG42 up, and that's doing huge damage on yeah. these uh, bolts right here. He put it in front of his other machine gun, so it's got coverage from behind it as well. It's going to be pretty much yeah, impossible to flank it from the, from the street side. Very good uh, defense against this harassment, but still, he's losing the plus 16 over here. He's losing... The uh, he lost the... the yep. He lost... Yeah, the, the German player lost the, the left-hand side. But he gained. Um, looks like he's. You know, they're they're switching sides. They're like, okay, you take the left. No, no, no. I'll take. No, I'll, you take the right. Okay, I'm. Uh, we're gonna we're gonna take the left. Okay, you you just retreat and I'll take the right. Okay, there we go. So we'll see where they actually finally stabilize into. But it looks like we might stabilize into sort of a more traditional. Both sides are taking. You know, this the south versus the north sort of a deal here. Yeah, the Wehrmacht just, player has a lot of very low health units. He really needs. Um, I would suggest med kits because. On these low health squads, they're not going to be much help in combat against pretty much full health bars, especially with the triage center up, so it could be really messy here. Great use of the MG moving that thing around to any to anywhere he can, he, he can think of getting a few units pinned, and that MG is pinning very quickly. That's, that's surprising right there. 
Well, it was a MG42. Remember? Yeah, that's true. And we do have double vet now, and look at that. Pretty good use of, uh, of, of sandbags. Because now the enemy can't really advance through there without taking a lot of damage. Look at we've got a mine here as well. That must have been that placed earlier. Axis are trying to move up on the uh -oh, left -hand uh -oh. side. Decent grenade. MP40 is cleaning up though. Oh yeah. That was pretty. That was pretty well done there. That was just massive firepower from the from the Axis players. Yeah. Or from the Axis squads rather. Just all on one squad. The Americans couldn't get the other squad there in time to help out. Good use of suppressing fire, but a uh, bar squad might go down. Just narrowly gets out of there with no help. Good use of the engineers to draw their fire from their retreating squad. <laughs> Here comes squad. that like, same MG42. That's definitely an integral part of the Allied player's game right now. That is allowing him to harass so much. And we have paratroopers coming down to support. Nice work right there. They might get chewed up by these MP40s though. This could be this could be difficult. Good retreat on that MG. I'm really liking to see these retreats. Really, really well timed. Yeah. Neither player in cover here, unfortunately. It's hard to get. There's not really something, anything either of them can do. Here comes a grenade, I think. No, no. I expected one, but it wasn't. Sniper almost got wiped out on the right hand side by one volley from these two crack units behind the sandbags. Oh, yeah. That was surprising. But he has a triage center, and I'm really loving that. That'll just heal him up straight, straight quick. Yeah, it does cost fuel, but it does just heal your guys every single time they come back for free. Every time. It's so. imperative for a strat like this, especially yeah. airborne. You've got to keep your guys full health, and they'll gain vet. And when you get uh, vet airborne troopers, they're nearly indestructible. <laughs> yeah, they're once they get once they get a little bit of vet, they do the same kind of damage as uh, maybe nearly as much as rangers, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but not quite. Those recoilless rifles are always devastating. Huge push here. Amazing use of this MG with uh, these BARs, using it as support. It's really great play right here. He's clumping up all his units. Good grenade. Both though. sides are. Didn't do that much in the first one. That was huge. Look at all those XPs. Oh, I don't even know where that's coming from. I think that's the, uh, the MP40s are just destroying everything in there. That was a huge. They got their MG record. back too. If they can, if they have enough, enough, they can't even capture it without losing a squad. Yeah, that was about 12 American soldiers we'll down shot. in that engagement. That was a huge loss for the American. Not sure if he lost any squads, but he was close too. Veteran C attained. We got veteran Good use C of the, the sniper. sniper. To harass. He's gonna try to keep him off that uh, MG42 but it looks like they're going to grab it here. We have a bunker up on the right-hand side. That's interesting. I'm, it's probably going to be a medic bunker. Good use of keeping that MG out of the... I think uh, they, got, they got a squad there, I'm pretty sure. Yeah. Two squads retreating. I think what he tried to say left. is they won't retreat. <laughs> that's really... Uh, <laughs> he won't tear us. Well, that's, well, that sniper is being say. devastating right now, and he's going to grab that MG42. Got eight back. kills already on that sniper. That helps level the playing field there. I really thought that if they were able to get that MG back, that would be very, very detrimental to the Allied play. But it seems like he was able to pull out a, a stalemate at best from that engagement, even though he lost a massive amount of infantry. Both sides have their own little stalemate going on here. They've got. Surprisingly right enough, side. Bridger, we actually have the uh, bunker being upgraded with a machine gun 42. Oh, yeah. That's very unusual. It is, but he's got it in a decent position. Oh, those poor Bridger, pioneers. Yeah. All right, well, I'm going to pause at the 1655 mark. <laughs> the Germans have cut the sound again. And uh, I'll call you back. So now... We've got a bit of a standoff on the right-hand side, which is very interesting. The sniper, though, picking off pieces of this uh, of the grenadiers. Now, does he? Is he? Uh, he's terror, the Axis player, right? I believe so. Yeah. So he's not going to be able to gain the defensive bonus where he could reinforce it as bunker. I think probably the Allied player is going to counter that bunker with a mortar fairly quickly. Huge engagement on the left. This is not going to go well for the American players. Just way too many grenadier squads right here. That's really big. They could now. They lured him right back in a machine gun fire. Excellent play right there. Excellent play. 
But now if you could get some flamethrowers into those grenadiers, because if vet two they take double the damage from flames, I'm pretty sure. So that would be really bad. Something like that, yeah. Good retreat again. I'm really impressed with these retreats on both sides. Perfect timing most of the time. Yep. Well done. Very well organized. You know, stays long enough to do enough damage, but gets out before anything really bad has happened. Left hand uh, munitions right point has been satchel. captured. Oh, yeah, That's, look at that. I wonder if it's going to kill in the first hit. It might. No, not quite. Not quite. I love how the, the damage on these buildings is positional. So they threw the satchel on the right-hand side, and the right-hand mm -hmm. side chunk of the bunker got blown off. Yeah, that's really cool. Whole is he just going to throw uh, another one? Because that's well, a really expensive bunker kill. But... And uh, recoilless rifles can't upgrade in enemy territory, so that's... Yeah, he's going to use another. Yep. I mean, I guess it, it serves Wait, what? its purpose. He deleted it. <laughs> ha! Take oh, that. that sucks. That's funny. He didn't give him the experience, I think. That's yeah, funny. I guess so. And here come the uh, low-health German reinforcements, which are probably going to get chewed up by these airborne. No. No, I think there's just too many guys. I mean, you did have six guys there. And if they're yeah. German and double vet, they're going to take a lot less damage. It's trouble. Yeah, agreed. We have a Panzer Command coming up. Holy crap. He that jumps straight to it, huh? not even 20 minutes into the game. That's really big, and the whole left-hand side is under Wehrmacht control, but there's a huge American push here, a little rifle horde, and a paratrooper squad that are going to try and say hello and just open this, this section up. But we have LMGs are being upgraded on some Grenadier squads, so that's going to help suppress and combat. Oh, flamethrowers. Flamethrowers, big boom. They're all stuck in cover there, taking big damage, but there's a grenade! Oh, I thought we might have saw a critical from the flamethrower there. Treat, treat, get out of there. They're suppressed. Excellent. Big engagement on the left-hand side again. Huge infantry battles here. Lots really of... impressive. Uh-oh, strafing run! Oh, devastating strafing run. Got at least five guys there. And the tree. Don't forget the tree, Bridger. <laughs> no trees were harmed in making this video. And that's okay. It's gonna be interesting to see if he builds uh, sandbags on the other uh, wire on the other side of all these sandbags now. <laughs> yeah. Again. But interesting use. There's a lot more use of sandbags in this match than I've ever seen in any other, you know, match combined yeah. of the ones Definitely. that we've done. <laughs> Much less a one v one in Angaville. Standing out to cap all this territory. That sniper already has ten kills. Double vet. Surprising. I didn't. I didn't even know it was still alive. <laughs> He was Could we see the an base American for a version while. of Klaus this game? Is it possible? <laughs> no, it was Hans. Hans the sniper. Oh, it was Hans, wasn't it? I'm thinking of the bike driver, yeah. This is George. <laughs> and the Volks hit the mine on the uh, right-hand side. Did a lot of damage to him. Panzer IV is almost up from uh, Hauptgefreiter. That's going to be really big here. Yeah, How far is like, he along in the command tree for Airborne? Uh, he's... he's mm, looks like he's got strafing run on the right-hand side, and he's got Airborne on the left. He could get an AT gun. Uh, he's got he's two points right now. I'm amazed we haven't seen recoilless rifles on any of the Airborne squads yet. We actually have a Vet 1 Airborne squad. But yeah, the he Panzer IV the is, is, is pretty it. much the right counter here, especially if he had some Vet on it, but now he's changed his mind. He was driving out and then he turned around. <laughs> <laughs> that one up on the tank. Oh, it That'll is that help. one, yeah. That's going to be important. But getting that thing out there and doing some damage as soon as possible is going to be important. I don't know. Uh, we got a tank depot coming up now. And the American player has tons of fuel. Because yeah, both imagine. players have been spending a lot of time not teching this game. They're spending a lot of manpower on the infantry game. But they're doing a good See, job I'm of really it. I'm really enjoying this right now. Uh, most players would just rush their first piece of armor into the enemy, but he's waiting for infantry support, and he's actually sending the infantry in first. This is great play right here by the Wehrmacht player. Whoa! Sniper and suppression. That's pretty... Oh, sniper Whoa. gets one shot. One shot by that the tank. Poor George. <laughs> he only managed to get 11 it's kills. Yeah. He's driving the tank right up. Over the sandbags. No more cover for you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that's a huge, uh, 
I wonder what he's going to produce first, if he's even going to get the upgraded gun on the Sherman since they've been reduced in cost, and if he has a lot of fuel, he might as well. Uh, he was low on so manpower. He's going for an M10. Okay. That'll definitely help if well micro, because we don't have any Shreks up on any of the infantry, which is interesting enough. Normally, you always see Shreks up. LMG up. up. Yep, LMGs are up. Losing that sniper was very surprising. I was not expecting that to happen at all. No, not a one shot. Anyway, it was just like a direct hit, which is very un mm -hmm. unlikely. The it was sniper exposed usually gets and it wasn't in side. any cover, so I guess yeah. that's how. The right hand side. Oh, it's mine, just mine, boom! You're losing a munition sector. Wow, that's big right there. That M10 is going to definitely have a field day now if he doesn't get that repaired. Yeah, looks like that's what he was going to do is to take out that that house or this house even it looks like he's got a mass of inventory this would be perfect time for suppression fire but he's using uh his guys are in the building right now if, okay if you can he use it in had buildings. A, that's right an mg in that building that would just shut down this axis advance he, completely. he could use suppression fire right now he's in the building and uh he could definitely use it but oh my god there's your, there's your. One, two, three, right four, there. five, One, six, two, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Like thirteen. I Holy like crap! Wow, that was only hundred and fifty munitions, guys. <laughs> Who wants to buff airborne? <laughs> well, just strafing run is still ridiculous. I mean, they buffed yeah. it in the patches and then they made it, and then they nerfed it, but they didn't nerf it enough. It's yeah. still ridiculous. Even that was double vet. Remember. Yeah. Double Vet used to never really like do to that see, kind of uh, damage. Smoke come down, like for the bombing run. I would like to see smoke come down for the strafing run. Yeah, maybe give it a little bit more delay. I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'd rather have less delay on everything, but have them all be a little bit less damaging. Agreed. Uh oh, agreed. uh oh, uh oh! Sticky bombs in the wheels. There you go. It Both sides nice lost right their there. armor. I mean, the reason being is you don't want to spend 150, 200 munitions to drop something that the enemy's going to be able to run away from, you know, 50 or even 40% of the time. Because that's just, you don't want to completely waste it much of the time. Maybe if somebody's really paying attention, you want 10% of the time for them to be able to get out of there. But, uh, you know, you want it to be effective enough to where you trade that 150 munitions, you know you're going to do some damage. Yeah. I, I also I see like artillery and strafing runs as the penultimate destroyer of entrenched enemies. I don't like to see see them being used too much against active forces, so I guess that's part of the same thing. But there, they lost the uh, machine gun on the left again. Yeah, I did see that. Good use of the flamethrower right there from the flank to shoot this, just flaming it from behind. But they're really determined to hang on yeah. to that machine gun. Gonna lose more rifles here. Of a vet one squad. He might get out of there, actually. And he did oh. kill the flamer. Yeah. Killed the flamer, yep. Got a critical, I think. No, it didn't critical. It didn't explode. We're only about a quarter away from a King Tiger out for the Wow. Definitely going to be. And we have Walking Stukas also upgraded on this half track that's a little bit below health in their base. So that's definitely going to help him up, upset any static defense that the American player is able to set up. But it's really impressive how many times these resource points have uh, shift, shifted hands, don't you think, Bridger? Yeah, they've been going back and forth. Here comes. Ouch, ouch. Oh, boy. Damaging, damaging hit right there. Yeah. The first one got nothing, the second one got one, then another, then another two. Ouch. And it is a vet two squad as well. Yep. You get that longer sticky um, range, I believe. Oh, he's taking a little bit of a chance. He's base rushing to try and kill that walking Stuka. This could really be a good engagement. He has no anti-tank in his base. Yeah, He's but the American player doesn't know that. He doesn't know he's not a Panzer yeah. IV waiting for him. The, he shot the back doors off of the thing. It was also never healed before, so he got it. Wow. That was a that was a well done little. <laughs> <laughs> he said, "Fuck, I hate this game." Then he ran over it. No munitions yeah, so for no you. Munitions for you. Yep. <laughs> Too bad the German player doesn't have the equivalent of a strafing run. Look at this bunched unit on the left. Yeah, no kidding. Walking Stuka now would be fun, but... Uh, <laughs> it would, wasn't it? But nope. Really? And oh, his Shrek's well are out on the, on the field. That's where it is. He's got a Shrek squad. I was going to say, he better have a Shrek squad after that M10 came out. He knows the enemy has, an, has, has a, a tank depot. Or... Yeah, definitely. Oh, okay. no. Oh, this no. tank is just sitting here, shooting out the bunker. That could allow... Yep.
for the enemy to just waltz right into the base and kill re reinforcing units. That would be bad for the Axis. This could be a changing point for the game once again. But here Panzer comes a Vet 1 Panzer. It off. Yeah, it's a Panzer IV. Vet 1. M10 is just going to have to get out of there. It can't go head to head. No way. Oh, look, he almost had the bunker, too. Another mine went off by the right hand side. Good mine use and uh, making the enemy pay for every little resource point they try to take back. Oh, oh yeah, back. right next to the fuel there? Yeah. Yep, definitely. It's a really nice play so far. Great switching of hands constantly. I wonder why. I'm really surprised he doesn't have Recoilless rifles up yet, because I guess he doesn't really need them. I think he's saving but... for the strafing runs, which have been so yeah. so cost effective for him. Very true. Very true. And he's repairing his M10 over here. He brought these guys over to repair it. I don't think he's repairing it right now actively. <laughs> Definitely nice hit by that uh, M10 right there. Yep. First the Panzer IV missed, then the M10 missed. Now we've got Shreks out in the field. Oh, but they're running right into fire! If I think he gets the, uh, that M10, he's going to have enough for uh, the, the Tiger. He's going to get it. Oh, there's the Shrek. That's what he needed. I can't believe that Shrek squad lasted so long under the flamethrower. That's true. But it was firing on something else half the time that retreated. Uh, oh, lost the LMG. But yeah, I guess it was worth it to kill that M10. Yeah. And he there's the out. King Tiger. Oh, boy. No M10. He's building a Sherman right now. Do they, does he have the upgraded gun, Bridger? I don't think so. I haven't seen it so built, but he, he could have built it earlier. He's got recoilless now, finally. That's good. And with the stickies, he if he can cripple it and take it out with uh, recoilless rifles and a Sherman, he's definitely still in this game. And we're still just barely over the halfway minute mark, uh, halfway through the game mark, so just about anything can still happen. Out there. Map control's about split right now. He needs to keep those tanks together to support each other. And a, and a, a, Panzer, uh, a Panzer IV combined with the King Tiger is going to be very difficult. Uh-oh. I wouldn't want to be this machine gun squad. <laughs> oh, he's going for a sticky, maybe? Possibly. He's got the increased range on the sticky. Yep. Oh, he didn't even need it, though. He's just crushing he's it. He's going to run over this one guy, maybe. No. It might even get immobilized. If it was immobilized, that would be huge. Oh, yeah. No, just damage engine. Which isn't that big of a deal, because this thing could soak, like, ten stickies. Meanwhile, killing Agreed. the rifles the whole time. But if you can get that immobilized, that's really big. Another Panzer IV coming out here. Is, are we going to get an AT drop or anything? He has the AT drop. Yeah, um, but he doesn't have the manpower right now. Here comes the first unupgraded Sherman. How much that, that's going to help? I'm not quite that sure. turret turns so slowly. That unupgraded that's Sherman could just dance Sherman dance here. around it if he wanted to right now. He's going to need yeah. those Panzers. That's, that's what I meant by they needed to have supporting. He's going to be bringing them up soon enough. Here Good comes the first here. shot. How much damage is it going to do? Wow. A little less than I'd expected. That was a rear armor hit, too. Come all the Grins. The American player's in a difficult position. Uh-oh. There we go. That was good. Faust. I think that's it. Sherman's not getting out of there. He's going to try and duck behind the hedge. Is it going to be in time? Yeah. Wow. Yes. yes, it is. He needs to get it out of there and get that upgraded gun as soon as possible if he can. What do you think would, would help him more right now, Bridger? Uh, the AT gun drop with support from his infantry or uh, the upgraded gun on the Sherman? Oh, I think the AT gun is is the penultimate defense. Oh, he's crawling his way through. He's going to spot the... A oh, oh, no, never mind. He's driving away. He was trying to catch it behind the hedge, and he almost did. Unfortunately, he was backing his King Tiger through the hedge instead. Yeah, he lost a Vet 2 rifle squad on the right-hand side. He was too busy microing in the middle. That's a pity, though. Almost lost that Vet 2 Panzer Shrek Gren squad, too. <laughs> that guy's running for his life. There's yeah. no doubt about that. Oh, and the pioneers that are coming to repair have been suppressed. There's the AT. He just there called it in. That's a good place for it, too. Yep. It covers a wide arc it right there. covers the whole uh, hedge. And we've got the crawl bug on these pioneers. 
Oh, excellent. Don't you just... Whoa, that tree. Enemy unit down. That tree just hit that fuel point with maximum speed for some reason. I love these physics glitches. Yeah. He moved the AT gun back so they couldn't be hit by these volks. Very nice play right there. Smart move with his uh, support unit. Not leaving it <laughs> He's out there crushing the wall. Armor piercing rounds. Shoot through that wall. It'll do double the damage to any wall. Oh, nope, he's nice gonna circle it with the Panzer IV. Ooh, here comes all the armor. This AT gun's in a bad way right now. Yeah. As soon as he started it moving, it couldn't it couldn't fight off yeah. the armor anymore. If only he could pick up a Shrek, that would definitely help. He's him. trying to cut it off. There we go. AP rounds, activate. Yeah, this is a big blitz. But a nice counter by the uh, recoilless rifles on the left. Definitely. Rear armor shot. The X players notice it yet. He's gonna get one of these Panzer IVs for sure. But he's gonna lose his Sherman for it. Good, yeah. But if he loses both of those uh, sh uh, Panzer IVs, that's definitely big and a huge boon for. The and he still has the Sherman, surprisingly enough. And there it goes. Never mind. Now, what is going on with the King Tiger? Did he lose the Pioneers that were repairing it? I think he did. He did. The machine gun killed it. And there goes the You're machine gun. In sector. <laughs> Great cat and mouse play here by both sides. He's firing up to catch a Panzer IV head on with a recoilless rifle? That's a bad move. Well, especially because he's luring it into the King Tiger. Now he realizes that yeah. it's not a good idea. But the uh, Axis player, all of his capping power is back at the base. Definitely, yeah. He's going for another okay. uh, walking Stuka, I think, here. Yep. Definitely. That's going to hurt the allies a lot, especially if they try to get another AT gun up. They're did it actually that. destroy the AT gun? Yes, it did. Okay. Yep, and they got that. another AT gun just dropped in. Yep. Now, I'm interested. The American player, had, yeah, he had tons of uh, CPs, and he wasn't spending them. Now, he finally got supply drops and bombing run. Ooh, he has bombing run. That could really help him out on all this, uh, the Axis infantry running around. We have a threat to but he might as well just use a strafe, because there's actually not that much. A lot of the Grenadier squads were killed, surprisingly enough. I'm looking at it, he only has, uh, three combat squads. <laughs> That's not a lot. No. But the Americans also lost a lot as well. Germans are seizing territory. From yeah, he needs to get that King Tiger healed up. It's so close. He just needs to get the Pioneers over there and fix the damaged engine because that's big problem. But he's, it is, definitely. The Americans got his AT gun facing the wrong way. Now he's switching Excellent. it. Never mind, he's turning it around now. These VPs are also always going back and forth. Have you seizing noticed that territory. too, Bridger? Yeah, the, the German players in, in, a, in a tough spot though right now. But it looks like he's slowly getting it back. Up. Oh, yeah. I hear it. I hear it. Where's it coming down on the AT gun? Could it be? Yep. Oh wow! If that made that actually just missed it a little like bit. Uh oh. Uh oh. Enemy unit Beautiful bombing. Got run the right Pioneer there. squad, didn't he? And and he hurt did. the King Tiger again. That's why the King really Tiger's so annoying because they they can't they can't manage to uh, repair it. It takes so long to repair. Yeah, he just definitely. needs like to build two more pio squads that just do nothing but repair the King Tiger. Drag it all the way back to the base. Just back it all the way up. Get two pio squads and just fully repair it again. Looks like we fight today. Uh -oh. and he definitely because those those uh, the King Tiger does take about ten to fifteen minutes to repair, especially in this situation. Knights Cross are coming up now. Yep, too. I see him. He might be going again with the um, walking Stuka rockets. I'm waiting for it. I saw him relocate it like he wanted to use them. Yeah. All right, let's go back over here. Base is pretty much dormant. Is he hurting in manpower right now, the American player? No, he's got 388. He's gonna sacrifice his Panzer to, to save the Tiger, He's gonna I think. get that King Tiger, you watch. Get up there with your, oh, Panzer IV down. Is he gonna run over anyone? Run over yeah. one. Nope. He killed the whole squad! Oh, it did! It got the whole squad! <laughs> including the Recoilless! Oh my god. <laughs> now his other now team doesn't that. have the Recoilless. His ATs has to push up. 
I don't understand. He's not bringing anything to help. He has to get it. He can't let that thing get back to base. No way. Can he do it? Can the he AT do it? just he keeps going speak. forward. Yep. He can do <laughs> Ping it. He off the front good. again. Oh, here come Knight's Cross. That's He's what he needed a long time ago. He said the Knight's Cross, they should have been sent over as soon as the King Tiger was in trouble. Uh oh. Oh no, it's a recoilless. That could be bad. He can't kill it from the front. The building. No. Got him! <laughs> There's another one. <laughs> here comes another one <laughs> dropping from the sky. He can't kill him. Keep backing it up. He stopped. Don't stop. Keep going. And now the AT gun's gonna go down. That's huge right there. Unless, uh, does he have enough for another bombing? There's by still chance? no Pyo Squad. Build a Pyo Squad. <laughs> <laughs> There's an AT. Is he gonna reman it? No, I was gonna say he's gonna reman it with, with Knight's, Knight's Cross. cross. Oh, that That'd would be, be terrible. Crazy. Here comes, here comes a strafing run. You watch. Oh, I hope so. I actually think a bombing room would do him a lot better right now. Walking Stuka coming down on all these. Oh, Ooh. Geez. Un Lucky for the American player, most of it wasn't directed at where he was. That was really lucky. It did kill the, uh, the squad, though. Oh, he doesn't have the resources for a... Uh, he used too many AP rounds or, uh, on the uh, AT. Oh, that's Nice grenade. Very low health. Why didn't they leave? Oh, they're pretty low health. King Tiger is getting... That King Tiger... We probably won't see the King Tiger for the rest of the game. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That's going to be, that's going to sit this one out. <laughs> Just sit on the sideline. He's line. limping. Yeah. He needs another Pio squad. He needs at least two. Knight's he does have one, get too. On the left. That three bars are up. That's surprising. Anything built, Tank Depot is building something. Is that an M10 by chance? Yep, M10. He's going to rush into the base like the Stuka and try to get it. That would be the smartest move, I think. And he's going to try to get the walking Stuka, too, probably. That's what I would do. Sounds about right, but he's got two pile squads working on the King Tiger now. It's going to be ready. It's not going to. It's barely going to survive, but it's going to survive if he charges straight in. We'll have to see. I'd actually put my money on the uh, M10's micro if he can do it well enough, because it's so damaged. The engines, the engines, pretty much gone, and the turret speed is so slow, and he doesn't have any other anti tank to help him inside the base. No, you're right. He has a he has a squad that says it's a Shrek squad, but it's an MP44 squad. Really weird. He could use that recoilless if he could pick it up. I think is what he's going yeah. for. Maybe not. How's the N10? What are you doing? Don't drive into the. All right. Well, that was a big hit right there. Oh the boy. He's gonna try to run over the pyos. Watch. Can he do it? Look at that do it? turret turn. So. Oh, he, he wait. He has he has a Faust on those Knights Cross. He could use it. He can use it. If you could think. To use it. it, it wouldn't be kill it regardless, even if it was a rear armor. It could man. now. It could now. Here it is, Faust. Oh. Faust. Oh no! He's got to stop and rotating the King it. Tiger. No! No, it's not. if you just weren't rotating it, the turret might have turned fast enough. Oh, that's bad. Now it's gonna crawl out of there. <laughs> Where's your Shreks, man? Where's your Shreks? He never built any. How much resources does he have for munitions? And he's gonna run over the. There was a knight's cross stuck in the treads. <laughs> How many mi excellent. munitions does he have? Uh, he has 300. <laughs> oh my god, he totally could have used a lot more Shreks. Yeah, he could have. To but, back uh, that up. Ah, uh, that was close. He's just gonna use prop war for the rest of the game, probably. Yeah, now, I mean, have you ever seen the King Tiger do as much as a regular tiger because it always seems like it's so much more worthless to me it gets destroyed engine or damaged engine and then it's out for the rest of the game pretty much yeah that seems to be the case oh jeez nice yep. running right through machine gun fire that's why they got the oh. cross right there because they kept dying on the battlefield <laughs> no kidding <laughs> the vps are still in axis control though they're taking the ally really low Yes, indeed. I think that's the ally. No, no, no. The Axis are the ones that have really low right now. Really? Yeah. Okay. It's backwards on your screen, remember? Okay, yeah. I hate that. Fix that, please, Relic. Please. please. <laughs> Back, yeah. Ah, Panzer IV. Panzer IV. Now, they where's that Panther? Really Back it up. Yeah. Yeah. 
We have complete right side control by the Wehrmacht player. <laughs> I don't know if you saw that, Bridger, but by the strap point on the left, a guy was about to throw a sticky, and the Panzer IV slowly went forward and ran him over. <laughs> that was awesome. AT guns moving up on the left. Now he's repairing his units when they're actually damaged instead of waiting yeah. six hours. Now, yeah, oh, I learned my lesson. AP rounds are up. Well, not really up, but the machine gun is firing. Grenade Surprising that, uh, really does, does, the, does the American machine gun get bet at four kills? I don't think so. It must have killed something spectacular, I don't know. Oh boy, here, here it's gone now, it doesn't matter. <laughs> no, oh boy! Just obliterates it all. Now this, now the walking stook is paying for itself. It just needs a couple more bursts like that, especially on a Vet Three Allied squad. The Americans, I think, are in a good way now. They have more capping power, although they, they they're Enemy lacking in armor. Down. Maybe another M10 would help him. How's he doing? Uh, could he build another M10 right now? Uh, yeah, in about uh, 10 seconds here, he could build another one. Really, probably should. He's got 240 fuel. He's got enough fuel to do whatever he wants. Yeah. It's just a matter of manpower. But it looks like he's reinforcing instead. We have a mortar falling on the MP40 Volks in the building. Great use right there. Aha, uh -huh, yep. Ready to fight, sir. We build it from the WSC. AT gun missed. Surprisingly enough. I don't know what those flame pyros are trying to... Oh, okay, here comes another walking stupid. Good thing the allies know they don't walk backwards. Walking backwards is unacceptable. Uh-oh. And this AT gun is just running through these huge <laughs> missiles that have been all over the place. Oh, but it didn't seem to do much. I don't think it got anybody. Big spread. It's a good thing that it doesn't have DOT damage, I'll tell you that much. Right? Yeah. The allied player in a lot worse of a way. Oh, yeah, it does enough damage on its own. It doesn't need dot damage. <laughs> Damage over time, that is. Yeah. Another Panzer IV coming up. I, I don't know really what the Allies could do right now other than just make a mad dash for all three VPs and try to keep capping them because they're in a bad, they're they're in a tough situation right now. They sure are. I mean, he needs to get that armor collectively together with all his infantry and just get force a massive battle because the Axis player has the upper hand right now. He's got better armor. He's got better infantry, and if he just puts them all together, he can win this. Which is what he's doing right now. This is, this is, uh... Ooh, this is rough to watch right now. This is really tough for the Allies. Complete they, wipeout I mean, of the AT gun, that's big. Huge, but they really haven't been able to capitalize on it. If you would have gotten that triple vet M3, uh, the M10 out, that would have been really good. <laughs> But there was no way he was going to get that out. Prop war used on the center. NGs. Who are trying to cap the VP. Ha. Huh. Yeah. Left hand side, great harassment with the Knights Cross capping the VP. But in the north, the Allies are capping them all over the place. It's just really random, sporadic units, airborne behind the lines. Oh boy. Oh man, he needs to move his tank. Come on, push it forward. We got a big machine gun here shooting at us. Come on. What do you think the Allies could do right now, Bridger? Um, it's tough. They don't have a lot of manpower. I mean, I mean, they could maybe really surprise them by pumping out, like just fighting with what they have and not reinforcing anything for a while, and then just surprise them by coming out with like three Shermans with up guns or something. But. I, I, that, that's a really low chance of actually succeeding. Because they're taking a lot of manpower damage on the right-hand side here. Oh, boy. Walking Stuka didn't quite kill the Airborne there before they could kill the, the Panzer IV. That was big. We actually had a Firestorm used on the left-hand side to knock out the MG. And they did get the Panzer IV, though, on the left-hand side. That Airborne squad did kill the Panzer IV. But on the right-hand side, you mean? Yeah, on the right hand side. But there are two more to take his place on the left. He could use an Ostwind. <laughs> he couldn't actually, but. Uh, yeah, the recoilless would tear an Ostwind to pieces, but. The Knights Nothing Cross are really helping him out here. They're doing quite a bit of damage. No kidding, no kidding. He's just. Oh, the Axis. I just. He's, he lost all his Pios. He's always losing his Pios. 
If, I mean, I just wish he could, you know, once his tanks are damaged, just pull him back and repair him. Pull him back and repair him. Yeah, I mean, learn from Nuvian. Nuvian's micro on his tanks is amazing. Oh, yeah. They're in, they're yeah. out, they've done their damage, and they get back and they get repaired. And then, you know, the engineers are always protected. It's really, really yeah. well done. That's the kind of tank micro you like to see. I believe we have enough for a V1 now. <laughs> Interesting. The terror player, so we might see something fun coming up. The uh, the Americans are still short on munitions, heavily short on munitions now, because he upgraded all those uh, you know recoilless, and uh, yeah. he's used so many AT rounds to try and kill that King Tiger. Not to mention the double saddle charge earlier in the game. Yeah. If only the airborne player had manpower blitz, right? <laughs> yeah. Well, you mean munition blitz. Yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, he also needs manpower, too, right now, doesn't he? Right yeah, he's got about 300, but I don't know what he's going to do. Another Panzer IV up. Holy crap. Okay, so three Panzer IVs up, and he's still got 200 fuel. <laughs> I don't think the... Uh oh here comes a grenade here. Either way, these... These grenadiers... Uh-oh. Uh-oh, AT gun coming on the ground right as a uh, the walking Stuka comes into view. That's bad. Yeah, I think we could see a V1 on this victory point now. That would be awesome. That would really be entertaining. No? No, just another firestorm. Interesting. On the VP. You never see these things. Ever. <laughs> Seriously. Oh, never. but his, his opponent isn't paying attention. Yep. That's big. That took a long time no, to come down, too. No, he expects a firestorm. I mean, come on. <laughs> It's, it's a Who joke. expects the Spanish it's, Inquisition? It's Not With more fire. <laughs> oh wow, and it almost got the squad too. It, it took a long... Look, the last one comes down like 20 seconds after it starts. How useful yeah. is that? Not useful at all. Volk squad got wiped out and the... Uh, what is that? Uh, rifle squad got a recoilless rifle. <laughs> More walking Stuka, huge rockets falling on the northern VP. And H2 smoke is calling it. Alright, so what you're about to hear is both Sam and I make a little bit of a error or miscalculation, as it were. You may have noticed that we didn't really grasp who won that game? Um, we're gonna we're gonna blame it on marijuana. We weren't actually smoking it, but I'm sure it was marijuana's fault somehow. Um, but the good news is that 98.5 percent of the time, that's 64 out of 65 shows, we have managed to grasp who won the game by the end. So, um, yeah. Sorry about that. We, we did notice upon finishing the show, and we figured it'd be funnier this way. So, here's, here's the ending of the show. Holy yeah, shit. Yeah, the American player finally uh, gave up there. That was a very good run. He stayed in the game for yeah. a very long time. Every time it looked like he was in trouble, King Tiger pops out. He's just like, I got this. Come on. <laughs> I just need an M10. <laughs> The M10, little M10 that could, and uh, okay. the guys yeah, that are really inside, they're cranking the turret around, are getting tired, so. <laughs> <laughs> they just go to sleep. Yeah. Oh, man, oh. that, that was a pretty damn good game. Down to the wire a couple of times. It looked like one side was going to clock it, then two different base rushes by the American player. Both seemed to have paid off. Um, yeah. Just came in and wiped out the, the first walking Stuka, and every time you Could see the American the player play so well... I think it was just uh, he was relying too heavily on the manpower-centric airborne is what happened. He, lost, he had to reinforce those things time and time again to hold on to the recoilless, and uh, that was his only AT, and that was his problem right there. That's, it's just he lost the manpower war because he was paying you know, twice as much as the Germans every time that he was reinforcing. Yeah, airborne normally runs into that problem late game. They always get man in trouble with manpower. So one squad would have been okay, but it looked like at some points he used at least two or three squads of airborne. Yeah, um, I think he did about with, three with recoilless on a couple of them, which is how he went low too on uh, munitions. So getting uh, more tanks and less airborne probably would have helped him out. I think. Yeah, but very good game all around.
And thank you guys for tuning in to Tales of Heroes, episode number 65. So uh, go ahead and send us some feedback, talesof at gamefire.com. And if you like the show and you think that you want to help us out, go ahead and send us a donation. Tales.gamefire.com is where you can find us. For Rogers, I am Bridger, signing off. <laughs>